Hi everyone, welcome to The Grind. Today we are going to talk about our all-time favorite topic, persecution. <laughs> yes. Sounds great. I know, yes. right? How Let's to do it. How to talk about persecution, or more like, I guess, how to um, withstand our faith in this time, in this day and age. Uh, one of the reasons why is because we talked about Stephen being the first martyr yeah. um, in the Bible mm -hmm. and how he withstood his faith and how, like, despite everything else, he chose to still be, I guess, um, the beacon of light in his society, in his community, despite facing persecution mm. and eventually being stoned to death. Mm. So, I mean, mm -hmm. we don't live in a society where we get stoned to death Luckily. or, or, or yeah. made. But obviously, definitely there are microaggressions that we would face, you know, maybe snide comments. But yeah, definitely it is a challenge to be a Christian, to stand for our faith and our values in this day and age. Yeah. So, but before we jump right into talking about persecution, um, what's uh, an opinion that you feel persecuted personally for? I'm gonna let you go first. <laughs> I think for me, as someone who has been, uh, who studied music and someone as a Filipino, uh, people would say like, oh, oh, you can sing, right? Like, I thought all Filipinos can sing. <laughs> so it's like, for someone who's a musician, I feel like uh, I actually worked hard to study Oh. to learn music study right. so it didn't just naturally come to you because you're Filipino yeah yeah that's true I mean like there's still a lot of people who are not entirely gifted in singing in the Philippines so <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna say it like that just right so you yeah. don't you don't have to be Filipino it's so yes. therefore you sound like a person who's heard a lot of those people it hurt heard by a lot of people heard yes. <laughs> heard, heard. heard with your heard. ears yes I also know. been hurt with your ears as well. <laughs> Exactly. Um, DC is better than Marvel. Thank you! But Marvel is better than DC. You see what I mean? It's outrageous, egregious, preposterous. <laughs> it's definitely preposterous. <laughs> I mean, I won't persecute you. I mean, there's... But this... Mm, yeah, well... Yeah, right? Exactly. This could be an entire other episode. Yeah. But do you see what I mean? Just have a conversation, DC versus Marvel. We could, we could, we could have like, like an extended filler bit on the end of this episode where we just talk about this for a half hour, but we won't. Yeah, um, I think mine would be, well, more like food choices. I've definitely been persecuted for liking Marmite. Marmite. That is disgusting. This is so disgusting. Stop eating it. Do you want to be happy? No, I have lovely. never tried Marmite. It's beautiful. That it's, is, a, it's a delicious that's, spread. That's amazing. That's one of the best meals is having a toast and then spreading Marmite on it and then just eating it. Oh, delightful. What is the difference between Marmite and the other one? Vegemite? 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 It's essentially the same, same. thing. Oh, it's, it's, it's all filth. filth. It's all no, filth. it's all delightful <laughs> stuff. So, yes, that is one thing I feel slightly persecuted for, which is um, my food choices of Marmite. But, what? Termite. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, that's for other animals to eat. <laughs> but anyways, um, but yeah, I think, you know, we live in a society that's super, um, you know, diverse, super different, different opinions. You know, I like to believe that Nathan has accepted my um, like for Marmite and I've accepted that he prefers DC over Marvel, but we'll have a further discussion yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah. Um, but then again, also people are uh, divided as well in terms of their beliefs and, and faith. Yeah. So do you think all persecution of Christians is genuine or do you think it's a false perception? Because I think that's one thing that, you know, there are people talking about it like, oh, I'm being persecuted for my faith, so on and so forth. So yeah, what do you guys think? Do you think all Ooh. persecution of Christians is genuine? Wow. I believe there is genuine persecution of Christians. Definitely. But if we're talking about first world developed countries where you can go to church every Sunday, yeah, maybe not. Like there, obviously there will be situations where you can feel persecuted, mm -hmm. yeah. but not, I, I think it's a lot of it is how we interpret yeah. events. Yeah. yeah, I agree with that. I'm just gonna go saying that there is definite, there are definitely a lot of like genuine persecutions. <clears throat> but I do believe that there are certain things where 
sometimes we can get too far mm -hmm. Mm. with in 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 of course the, the sad thing about it also is it becomes sort of like those who are really exper experiencing genuine persecution are being washed because it feels like every single Christian is like now being persecuted for certain things mm -hmm. yeah. if we're not careful. Yeah, like I know there are like different like beliefs in like abortion or like you know LGBT and people are like oh there's a divide between like you know the Christians and non-Christians and so on like being pro-life pro like death whatever it is but then there's just some countries that you mentioned generally that you cannot be a Christian at all. Like you will get shot. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I was looking at the list of countries, like I think US is like not even on the list, mm -hmm. um, but like some countries are really hard to be a Christian, North Korea, China, Afghanistan, um, yeah. Afghanistan even, I think there were like talks about like women trying to escape Afghanistan, but they either get in the midst of trying to escape to the borders, they either get kidnapped, trafficked, or um, yeah, or women getting forced to marry non-Christians and, and basically the list goes on that there are yeah. countries where it is really Tough. difficult yeah. and it's yeah like those those are some legit persecutions mm -hmm. happening so to say that I'm being persecuted for my faith it's like ah, but then really though really you can still some of it is like I feel persecuted because people don't agree with me yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, which, you know, obviously, like, you want to, you, you want to share your, your belief with someone. Yeah. You want them to see the light in the, in the way that you think. Yeah. But sometimes people just don't. Yeah. Mm. That's just agree to disagree or mm. disagreement. Mm. It's yeah. not persecution. Mm. And also some people, like, liken persecution to loss of privilege. Like, oh, I don't, what? People don't listen to me that's my privilege gone or something yeah. like that so yeah. while we're on the subject i guess where where do you guys draw the line between like genuine persecution and like the perceived stuff mm. i would say i mean for me i mean this is just my opinion i just feel like when something that you that that particular person experiencing well sort of like persecution has to do with something personally like mm -hmm. she or he has experienced that he's been persecuted personally with his belief or what his mm -hmm. opinion is that's when i think is the line if mm -hmm. the persecution deals with like an experience that is affecting the whole church mm -hmm. then i can say that it can be a genuine one. that's what i think like how do i say like like for example like, like where we were talking about like when we have our own opinions with someone mm -hmm. else mm -hmm. and they just don't listen to that yeah. opinion mm -hmm. and, and we feel that we're being persecuted because we don't have a freedom of speech. That's when I think maybe there's a sort of like, a, a, uh, that's where it draws the line just because sometimes we can look at it in a more personal per perspective, meaning like, oh, he just didn't listen to what I'm saying. Right. Or they're not listening to what so, I'm saying. So right. like instead of persecution it's really just rejection yeah yeah something like that yeah, yeah that's true i think people just like hold the term persecution so loosely yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. like oh i feel persecuted because you're not accepting me and i guess like deep down that's what persecution is because you're not accepting that person and so therefore you attack them you disagree with them you reject them mm -hmm. and i guess different people have their own definitions of what it feels like to be attacked yeah yeah, so. yeah. i mean i like to think of We've heard the term like the war on Christmas, right? Yeah. And like how w when you get to that season now, there is less Merry Christmas. It's more yeah. Happy Holidays. Holidays. The imagery is not Jesus in the manger. It's Santa. It's, it's Santa, snowmen, Christmas trees. Or, yeah. Um, and I think some people have taken that to mean that they can't celebrate Christmas anymore. Yeah. Mm. Or that Christmas is being erased when mm. it's not, f from what, from where I see, see it, it's not the case. Mm. Yeah. We still go to church on Christmas Eve. Yeah. We still have a whole program. We can still celebrate yeah. the birth of Jesus, which is yeah. what it's all about. It's not, is Jesus on my Starbucks cup? Yeah. Right. Um, we can still do all of that. Mm. It's just that other people have the freedom to also celebrate their, their yeah. own yeah. way Christmas. Yeah. yeah, I mean, because I think I only realized the politically correctness of all of this when living in the States. Because here in Hong Kong, you say, Merry Christmas, Happy Holiday. I mean, I think it's always been Merry Christmas, season greetings, whatever. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's just more like a different way to say Merry Christmas, just like a pretty card. 
then when, you, when I'm in the States, like I, that's where I've realized like, oh, actually Merry Christmas isn't everywhere. But I didn't really think of it as like they're canceling Christmas. I think they're just being more like, oh, I guess general, general inclusive. and inclusive, I guess. Because yeah. I mean, there are some people who don't necessarily care about Christmas. It's just a holiday. Shock, today. horror, no. Inconceivable. Persecution can take many forms. There is <laughs> the, you have on one end, the being shot in Afghanistan. Yeah. yeah. And then on the other hand, it, it is like, for us, I guess it's it's like being ridiculed or yeah, yeah. Um, made fun of for our or faith. set aside. And yeah. then yeah. there are so many different ways you can interpret it. Yeah. But I guess what we're saying here is that there's a lot of it going on, and it's hard to really differentiate what is it, what yeah. the what genuine persecution, persecution. is. Yeah. yeah. Like, do Sometimes. you think it's persecution if a person doesn't get, um, like, say, given a job because of their religious beliefs? If that is the sole motivator behind that decision, yes. then yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what would be the difference between, I guess, persecution and discrimination? I think it's a different perspective of looking at it. If you're looking at it as a, at, like solely from the point of view of a Christian, mm -hmm. and I didn't get this job because I'm a Christian, then yes, that's persecution. Right. But if you're looking at it legally, yeah. it's, you didn't, the employer didn't give this person a job because they are a Christian. It's discrimination. Yeah, right. it's different. It's two sides of the same coin, I think. Mm -hmm. Right. I guess it's how I guess yeah on paper discrimination, but personally, yeah. if you yeah. persecute it, yeah, 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 that's a good thing. I don't know. It's just really interesting how like it's always religious beliefs that brings on the discrimination. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or like persecution. Mm -hmm. Like, what, what do you guys think that is? Like, why religious beliefs? Because I think not clearly, not everyone has the same religious beliefs, right. but everyone is entitled to, and they do feel just as strongly about their own beliefs as mm -hmm. Christians do. Yeah, yeah. In some way, you could say that it's like, it's territorial or it's tribal. Yeah. And when you get into that kind of, uh, if you get into that kind of area, then people are also very protective of their own beliefs and will therefore push back more, mm -hmm. yeah. I think. Mm -hmm. And also, like, I feel like, because, you know, when, when a lot of the times when we talk about belief, uh, religious beliefs as well, mm -hmm. it's just that um, it also deals with the lifestyle of the person. Yeah. So, like, if you talk to someone about your religious belief, you're technically also talking to them about their own lifestyle. And sometimes people, when, when they think about their lifestyle, they feel that they're going to be taken control of by mm -hmm. that particular yeah. thing, that belief, that religious. Yeah. So a specific, and especially for religious, it doesn't only affect like certain areas in your life. It pretty much affects the entirety of your life because yeah. religion deals with your personal, basically you yeah. personally. So, yeah. and, and people sometimes take hostility when when the word being taken control of something becomes the mere factor of what they're thinking already. Like, yeah. oh, this religion is gonna really take over everything that mm -hmm. I have. Yeah. And that's when they yeah. stop about it. I was, just, I was actually thinking about The Handmaid's Tale. I don't know if you guys read the book or watched the TV I mean, series. that is, that, that is slowly becoming a reality in some places, yeah. but <laughs> that's for another episode. But yeah, let's not, beat around the bush. There are some yeah. Christians who are leaning towards that yeah, direction yeah, yeah. now. Yeah. It's like that's their form of control is to yeah. get everyone on the same page. Yes. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. like when God created us, it wasn't meant for control. It wasn't be like everyone's got to get on the same page. I mean, ideally it's he wants everyone to be part of his family and he wants everyone yeah. to come into a relationship. Not like, you want to believe in me? And like point yeah, it out yeah. to you. And even if you look at it back at the beginning when God was like saying like, oh, you can eat anything yeah. in the fruit, just don't yeah. eat this one. Yeah. It's not like he said like, okay, we have one fruit, just don't eat this one. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Like, like, like we still he have gave choice. us, yeah, we have a choice. We have free yeah. will. Yeah. 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 I mean, do you guys think like sometimes when it comes to like say sharing our faith and whatever, like do you think we may bring persecution upon ourselves? Yeah. I, I do believe that because yeah. it, it's it's a choice like um, when you're believing in something whether whatever religion we are in if you're believing in, it's a choice so that means when you make a choice you decided what is about to happen to you whether it's a good thing or whether it's a bad thing and yeah. and usually as Christians even in the Bible said like 
Jesus already told us that you're gonna be persecuted because yeah. of me, right? Yeah. yeah. So when we chose that, yeah. we already know and expect what is coming for yeah. us. So yeah. Yeah, I, I guess when we, we do show our faith, we put ourselves out there, we make ourselves vulnerable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and whenever we do that, there is always the chance of rejection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I think if we are not strong enough in our in our faith, then we can we can maybe interpret that rejection as persecution. Right. I think. True. Um, like because the person we're sharing with or the people we're sharing with aren't ready to accept Jesus. Mm -hmm. That mm. doesn't mean Jesus is flawed. It doesn't yeah. mean this plan is flawed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, can't, we can't also over-spiritualize everything, like every little thing is like, oh, I feel persecuted for this, this person didn't listen to me. Yeah. But yes, you know, um, yeah, as a Christian, we may, you know, we, there will be trouble, we will face persecution for our beliefs, but I also dare say that sometimes we may bring it upon ourselves through the way that we do it as well, yeah, or yeah, share yeah. our faith. That's yeah. true. Because yes, we're meant to be like loving, so, you know, uh, with, our, with our actions and our talk, so yes. We receive persecution that way. Okay, I mean that's on that person, right? But if we come to people and like kind of force religion down your throat and force mm -hmm. Jesus, then of course, to face persecution, that's. I I always think of. It's not. I mean, I've seen it a few times here, but there, I always think of the person who is just like walking around the town square, saying, telling everyone they're going to go to hell yeah. if they don't accept Jesus. <laughs> and I'm just kind of. I see that and go, oh this is mate. Right. <laughs> You are bringing it on yourself now. Aren't you're you? bringing it on. It's not just on himself, but to all the Christians. Yeah. So, like yeah. you said, there is a way to go about it. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Because yeah. 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 like I know, like for one of the first times where I've told my friends about Jesus, I did it in a way where it was not ideal, where I pretty much told them like, oh, if you don't believe in Jesus, you're gonna go to hell, right? And that's what not to do. Exactly. Please don't do that. Don't. <laughs> but what if the person tells you like, oh, if you don't believe it, do we go to hell? Like that. <laughs> No, it was just basically, it was just, um, yeah, because I was arguing that my God is better than their God because it was, a, I mean, it was, wow. I was arguing nice. with a Buddhist and a Hindu. So we were arguing about our God. It sounded like a Buddhist and a that's Mantua a, that's Bar. A, that's a bar joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> literally, I was like a Christian and a Hindu and a Buddhist. Yeah, it's I mean. Because people have famously been argued into Yeah, salvation. exactly, right. I mean, as a, as a 12 year old kid or 11 year old, actually I was 11 at the time, you know, just, you know, arguing. Um, and it got to a point where obviously none of us won, won argument because none of us believed that either God was better, I mean, was worse than the other God. Yeah, just so we all... doing this. <laughs> I don't know, but I guarantee it's highlight worthy. Oh my goodness, what a collision! So it ended up basically being with the person saying, my friend saying, you know what, don't ever talk to me about Christianity again. Ooh, I never had the, the opposite. Effect. Yeah, and I never did. So I think the whole idea with you know your faith is you want to keep the conversation going yeah uh, which is why like alpha is beautiful because that's where it's supposed to create a space for you to talk to ask questions and not be persecuted for um your i guess having beliefs or no beliefs yeah. mm. so that's yeah. good yeah but yes definitely sometimes we bring it upon ourselves also the way we deliver the words but yeah at the end of the day like we want to be like steven mm -hmm. the the martyr um mm -hmm. who withstood persecution till the very end till he died mm. like is there anything that I don't know would that speaks out to you that would help you that you can learn from from this whole story from Steven yeah from Steven he is a nice guy <laughs> yes he, he was he's really nice <laughs> he was a nice guy, guy. Yeah. Um, really nice much guy. nicer than, than than I um <laughs> will ever be <laughs> yeah, probably yeah. um but I I think Wilma's two points about how he was full of faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He let that dictate the way his life went. Yeah, um, that's good. Right up until the moment he died, mm -hmm. which, to also Wilma's point, he was full of full of grace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even as he's dying, he's going, "Don't hold this against them." Yeah. Where I would be, kill them all. I would be yelling, "Avenge me!" Avenge me. Avenge me! No! <laughs> um, therefore, he's a nicer person than I. Um, but yeah, I think those two points, like he was so full of faith and full of grace for others, even the people who were 
going to kill him. Yeah. And I think for me, one thing that I really sort of like, so I, I was like thinking as well when we were thinking about the question, what is one thing that I would like to be like Stephen is really being full of the spirit as well. Yeah. Just because I, you can tell like even at the end of his life, the last thing that he said was, uh, what was it he say? <laughs> Uh, forgive. Uh, no, he said, do don't hold the sin against them. Yeah, do not hold the sin against them. It is sort of a really mirror of what Jesus said before he died as well. So you can tell that he was really full of the Spirit, that even in all of the circumstances that he was in, when he was preach, he was sharing God's yeah. Word, he was sharing the message, the Spirit was with him, until the end of his life that he just fell asleep because I know that he was at peace with the Spirit. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, he was a guy like full of grace, full of, you know, and, and all of that. But he also had um, had it within him to call it as it is. Because, mm. you know, right before that, uh, before they stoned him, basically, he says to them, like, you stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears. You always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did, so do you. Uh, which of the prophets that your fathers not persecute? And they killed those who announced beforehand the coming of the righteous one, whom you have not betrayed and murdered. You who received the law as delivered by angels and did not keep it. And then now when they heard these things, they were enraged, you ground your teeth and mm -hmm. at him. So it's like, he those, are, even more so those are fighting words. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying we're the same, yeah. but DC is better than Marvel. Okay, <laughs> yeah, it's fine. <laughs> okay, I can't. Like, uh, I'm just like, no, I don't know. You stiff neck when people, you, <laughs> DC is better that, than Marvel. I'm already like, Ready for the stone. It's like part of me agrees, but other part of me is like, but the movies though. But I have to say, DC has like some amazing cartoons. Anyways, anyways, we will digress if we start talking about it. You stiff-necked people. Okay, you uncircumcised in your heart. So, yeah, as we say, as we come to an end, we're never gonna be like those people living in those countries where it's really hard to be Christians unless we're called to move there, mm. right? Um, yeah, that would need to be a dramatic turn of events. Yeah, a dramatic turn of events. We are <laughs> You never... wake up in Afghanistan. <laughs> yeah. oh, no. And we're never going to face some of this, like, well, I'm not saying never, but I think the chances are we're most likely not going to face the same kind of issues that these people face, mm -hmm. right? Where we literally, like, living day to day, like, um, fearing for our lives, whether yeah. or not they're going to come hunt us down, drag us off, right? Um, but then the thing is, I'm not saying that our persecutions that we face is on par with what they're facing, but I think in our own way, when we're living as Christians, we're gonna face a certain level of persecution. Yeah. Whether it be like, you know, people making fun of us for our beliefs or not getting certain um, mm. you know, I guess a favor from from managers, whatever. I mean we work in a church is different, but I'm saying outside of church, right? Yeah. When people hold your religious beliefs against, you know, you mm. or or whatnot. But I think if, if anything that what we can learn from Stephen is how can we still be resilient? How can yeah. we still have character and mm. integrity mm. despite the mm. persecution that comes away? Yeah. And to always fix our eyes on Jesus. Amen. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, as much as we want to do unto others what they've done unto us and like, you know, enemies hurt us, we want to hurt them. We still want to extend the love and grace of Jesus. Amen. So yeah, that's that. Wow, that's a good conversation, guys. It is. All right. That's it for to the grind. Thank you all for joining us, and we will catch you at our next one. Bye. Bye.